Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Thursday, January 3rd, 2019, and we're going to look at a 2020 presidential election prediction between Senator Elizabeth Warren and President Donald Trump. So Elizabeth Warren recently announced that she is running for president of the United States in so many words. She's announced an exploratory committee, which means that she is probably going to run. She sent out a number of campaign ads. I've been watching a number of Reddit videos and, uh, you know, a number of Elizabeth Warren ads have come up throughout the videos. And uh, I guess it's just correlating to whatever I searched, whether it be in political or not. Um, but yes, she is going to run for president. Now, the big thing about this is she's running for president. So who else is going to run? Okay, Jay Inslee has definitely taken a huge step forward to running the governor of the state of Washington. Uh, and then we look at other people like Julian Castro, Kamala Harris, a number of other top names that are already pending announcements for their 2020 presidential election campaigns. As for them, they aren't the only ones in the names uh, of those people who possibly could run. Bernie Sanders could run. Joe Biden could run. Hillary Clinton, again, could run. There are so many possible candidates that the 270 to win a Democratic uh, candidate list goes off the screen. And I mean off the screen all the way down to Warren. There are a number of people that possibly could run. And if you remember going back in 2016, it was maybe five to six people here. It was never that long. Now, I get it. A lot of Democrats want to jump on this wave because they think they have a shot at becoming president. Unfortunately, many of them are not going, unfortunately for them, many of them are not going to pass the presidential primaries. The Democratic Party is vicious. Hillary Clinton almost lost as someone as much of an establishment candidate as she was almost lost. And yes, I get it. She's an establishment candidate. But how many of these people aren't? Okay. Bernie Sanders, probably a part of the establishment now, but again, you can still argue he isn't. Look at other people, uh, a number of other candidates. I mean, there aren't that many you can name that really aren't a part of the establishment. And again, that logic with Bernie Sanders, he has been the longest, uh, one of the longest members of Congress uh, in terms of the people that could run for president on the Democratic side. So that could always be brought up against him. And with Elizabeth Warren running, the progressive vote is going to be a lot hard, harder to direct into one direction. Maybe if they had one candidate like Bernie Sanders or just Elizabeth Warren. But if both of them run into this race, uh, it's going to be a bloodbath. And that's not accounting for a number of other Democrats that possibly could run. Uh, but we start off this video uh, as we usually start off videos. I'm going to be doing it in poll closing format. So we start off at 7 p.m. at Indiana and finish off in Alaska at 1 a.m. And along the way, we will be characterizing toss-up states with the little yellow indicator. Now, today we're going to start off with, again, the safe states. But I will be using uh, the... I guess, overall um, margins, I guess you could say, the margins for each individual state. Uh, for right now, uh, there are some states. There are actually this. Okay, I like characterizing every single state. Unfortunately, uh, in that situation, that puts me at a point where I have to make very, very difficult decisions, especially a year out. And, yes, I do like and I do enjoy making these videos, so I still want to do it. Um, but some of these states at the end of the uh, video may or may not be in the yellow column at the end of the prediction, which um, I will discuss once we actually get there. But for right now, we're just going to go through all the safe states uh, starting off at the 7 p.m. poll closing. So Indiana, Kentucky, and South Carolina. Georgia is a toss-up state for now. Virginia is a toss-up state for now. And Vermont goes to Elizabeth Warren. Now that leaves 478 electoral votes. We move over to 730. West Virginia is red. Ohio is a toss-up. And North Carolina is a toss-up as well as well and then we move over into the 8 p.m poll closings the south goes to the republican party the north goes to the democratic party as expected elizabeth warren wins her home state of massachusetts she's technically from oklahoma uh, but she's a senator from the state of massachusetts maine's first district i give to elizabeth warren but not by a safe margin so we'll actually come back to that one so i guess you could say the entire state is currently uh, in a toss-up north carolina sorry that's definitely not north carolina new hampshire is a toss-up state joined by pennsylvania Illinois goes to Elizabeth Warren, and Florida is a toss-up state. So that puts 75 electoral votes for Elizabeth Warren, 76 for Donald Trump. And we can move over to 830 with one state, the state of Arkansas, six electoral votes to add to the president's column, and then we can move over into 9 p.m. So Louisiana, Kansas, Nebraska, except for that second district, which we will come back to, South Dakota, North Dakota, and the state of Wyoming, and Texas, per the usual, will be a toss-up state, joined by Arizona, New Mexico goes to the Democrats, Colorado goes into the toss-up column, New York, of course, goes to the Democratic Party, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan are all toss-up states. Now, that puts an exact tie, 109 electoral votes for Elizabeth Warren, 109 for Donald Trump, 214 contested electoral votes, and we aren't done with the... Uh, exact map yet. Utah goes to Trump, joined by Montana, while Iowa and Nevada are toss-up states. 
Indiana, that's not Indiana, I don't know what's with me uh, today, but Idaho goes to Donald Trump, giving him 122 electoral votes, and now the Democratic Party runs up the numbers with California, Oregon, Washington, and Hawaii, and we finish off in Alaska at 1 a.m., giving Donald Trump their three electoral votes. So right now, we have 226 contested electoral votes. What are we going to do with them? Well, first of all, some of these aren't too contested. I'm going to go ahead and just pull out the uh, likely leaning and toss up map for right now so we can actually make clear distinctions as to which states are going to vote a certain way. New Mexico, I'm not going to say is safe for Elizabeth Warren, but I think it will be likely. Uh, but that's the only change from this map that I'm going to make in terms of any of the state's margins. Uh, and then we'll start going into the swing states and how exactly their margins are impacted by both Donald Trump and Elizabeth Warren. So Elizabeth Warren is probably one of the weaker Democratic candidates. She is uh, subpar, to be completely honest with you. We're looking at a candidate who had speculation of 2016, but that was really her peak time. Even though she was just newly elected a senator, uh, she is a lot more hated now. Even though she is more well-known, she could have made herself more well-known in 2016. Unfortunately for her, she's at a point where a number of progressives have already agreed to back someone like Bernie Sanders, which means where is she going to get her vote from? Probably not a number of those Clinton voters. They've already turned their attention to someone like Joe Biden. And yes, she is a top Democratic name, though that does not make a difference when there's a topper, I guess you could say bigger Democratic name like Joe Biden or Bernie Sanders, especially running on a ticket like that. Uh, but right now, I would say New Mexico is a, uh, a likely Democratic state joined by Virginia being in the likely column, being at 6 to 7% is the largest, I would say it would go, but that's still enough to characterize it as lo uh, likely. The first district in the state of Maine, I would characterize as a likely uh, district for Elizabeth Warren. Texas, I'm going to say, is a likely state for Donald Trump, 5 to 6%, uh, joined by Georgia in the likely column, uh, and that pretty much characterizes almost all of our likely states. I guess you could say the only one for right now I would say is Iowa, which could be another likely state at the end of the day. Uh, and that leaves Donald Trump with 185 electoral votes and 201 for Elizabeth Warren. Now, I get the argument that Elizabeth Warren is a progressive. I see that time and time again that's brought up in my comment section but how much of a bernie sanders appeal does she have to these voters how many of them actually relate to someone like elizabeth warren i get it she has the backstory but how many of them know the backstory how many of them have seen her how many of them have gone to her rallies and been excited by her bernie sanders was able to do that with young voters yes elizabeth warren stumped for hillary clinton in a number of these rust belt states the south wherever she was needed but how exactly did that work i mean yes she was a notable speaker Okay, people know who she is, but that doesn't exactly mean that she's inspiring them to get out to vote. That's one thing that Donald Trump did a phenomenal job at, which was getting his base out to vote. And Bernie Sanders did an amazing job at that, too, especially in the Rust Belt. Elizabeth Warren, we really just don't see that type of enthusiasm and energy for a candidate like her. I mean, when she ran, a lot of us were just like, OK, cool. Um, whereas if it was someone like Joe Biden or Bernie Sanders, then it would actually start getting a lot more interesting. Uh, but for right now. Elizabeth Warren loses the state of Iowa by a likely margin, even though I just predicted Bernie Sanders would win there. Uh, seems a little contradictory, but if you look back, look down closer into the candidates, you'll see why. Now, we can start by characterizing, actually, sorry, Colorado would be a likely state for the Democratic Party, 6 to 7% as well, over that 5% mark, which characterizes it at likely, and that leaves 143 electoral votes. Now, we can start going through a number of areas. So, North Carolina, I would characterize as a lean GOP state, joined by the state of Arizona. Although Arizona and North Carolina both had good news for Democrats in 2018, there's no real sign that they're going to vote, number one, for a progressive, someone like Elizabeth Warren, or number two, go Democratic in a presidential election. Keep in mind, the last time I went to a Democrat was in 19, uh, I believe, let me think, it's either 72 or 64, and then the time after that was 2008. By 14,000 votes, and it wouldn't have been 72, that was Nixon's landslide, I would say 76, uh, if anything, but still. That was the last time it was won by a Democrat in the new, I guess, modern era would be Barack Obama winning it by 14,000 votes. That's not a large margin, if you ask me. He won in Indiana more than he won in North Carolina. Yet some reason Indiana is a safe GOP state and North Carolina is always characterized as a toss-up state. It is possible for Democrats in 2020. Warren is just not that candidate. Ohio, I would also characterize as a lean GOP state. Right now, Ohio 
is very, very contested. If we get down just to where it was in 2018, good for Republicans on the statewide level, not so good on the Senate level, the House level, it was okay, uh, pretty good for Republicans. But looking at the presidential level, that's where it actually gets closer, especially with progressive type candidates who can appeal to the white working class better. I think Warren could narrow down the margin from Trump, but he still wins in the state regardless. Now for the state of uh, Nevada, I would give that one to Elizabeth Warren. This is a Democratic state. Democratic state history tells us that one's going to stay in the Democratic column. Not much needs to be said about it. The second district I would still give to the president along with the second district in the state of Maine. I understand that Elizabeth Warren is from the Northeast, but Bernie Sanders is barely able to draw that one over his finish line, especially with such a large margin of it swinging from 2012 to 2016. I'm going to give that one narrowly to the president, less than 2%, uh, and then Maine at large I would give to Elizabeth Warren. Um, Putting it probably actually in the likely column, to be completely honest with you, larger than 5%. Uh, joined by the state of New Hampshire, which I think can go into the lean column because it's still a close state, regardless of where you're from, unless you're able to, uh, you know, completely energize these voters and get a pretty solid voting base, which some candidates can do. I just don't know if Elizabeth Warren right now can do that, but we will see in her uh, primary performance pretty soon. And then the state of Florida for right now, I'm going to have to give that one to President Trump. It has shown very good news for the GOP in the past couple elections. Um, you know, 2016, 2014, 2018 as well. Democrats lost here. They lost a Senate seat. They did not carry the governor seat. They lost the popular vote in the House by 5% in the state of Florida. Um, even though they were closer margins, which is why this is only a lean GOP state, not saying it's safe, but it's still uh, a Republican state at heart. Looking at the state of Minnesota, I would give that one to Elizabeth Warren, putting it into the lean column. Joined by the state of Pennsylvania, I would also say that one goes into the lean column. Uh, and then you know, these final two states, the state of Wisconsin and the state of Michigan, you know, it's going to be really, really hard for uh, me to make a characterization here. I do not want to, and I'm not going to. Uh, these two states are going to be very, very contested leading into the 2020 election season. And I get it. I am making a prediction. I'm going to see a lot of backlash for not calling these two states, but they are just at a point where it has gotten very, very hard to make an accurate uh, distinction as to how these states would go, and I'm not confident enough in even the slightest bit of characterizing it one way or the other. Pennsylvania, Michigan, uh, Minnesota are pushing it. Uh, right now, I would not characterize Michigan or Wisconsin, but with a little bit more data coming out, especially with um, a couple things coming up with new candidates entering the race, we will actually see how these states will go, and uh, I promise you, next time I do do a Warren Trump prediction, I will finalize and uh, double down on my states uh, if nothing drastically changes. But looking at the approval rating of the president, I wouldn't say it's looking too hopeful there. Um, but also Elizabeth Warren, we don't know exactly how well she's going to get voters out, especially in the Rust Belt, the only area the Democratic Party is really lacking in uh, nationwide. So thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below, and I will see you all tomorrow.